When I was five, my family moved from Scotland to Perth in Western Australia. Not long after we arrived, I went on a school excursion to Kings Park. Seeing an unusual and very pretty wildflower nearby, I picked it, only to be told by my teacher, you can't do that, that's illegal. I was horrified. As five-year-old me saw it, it was just luck that there were no police officers present in the park that day. So I'd been spared a life spent in juvenile detention whilst trying to complete pre-primary at the same time. I didn't know you couldn't pick wildflowers in Kings Park. Did you know that at five? But it didn't matter, I'd still broken the law. And if I'd been over the age of criminal responsibility, so over the age of 10, I could have been liable for a fine of up to $2,000. My brush with the law at five clearly influenced my career choices. 20 years later, I was working as a solicitor in a community legal centre that specialised in assisting young people. One day, a client came to see me and he was in a bit of a predicament. He'd just started work as an apprentice and finally earning money, he had taken out a loan for his dream car. But being a young and inexperienced driver, unfortunately, as is often the case, He'd had a bit of car accident. It wasn't very serious, but there'd been a fair bit of damage to his car and the other car. Now, as anyone who's ever had a car accident knows, it doesn't take an awful lot of damage for you to end up with a very large repair bill. But most of the time, we're insured against that. We pay premiums to the insurance company and then they will pay out in the event of our cars needing repairing. But my client wasn't insured. He thought he was. He thought that when he had paid for his car to be licensed, he had also got automatic car insurance. And technically, he wasn't wrong. In Western Australia, when you pay for your car to be licensed, you do get automatically insured, but it's only for personal injury that you might cause to someone else, not damage to their cars. So here we have a young person just starting to work. He has a $10,000 debt that he owes to the driver of the other car. He has to find $8,000 to fix his own car and all the while paying off a loan for a car he can't drive until, until it's repaired. It was such a disaster for him. And it could have been avoided if he'd known about his legal rights and responsibilities. My client and five-year-old me had come up against a fundamental truth that we live in what's been referred to as a law-thick world, where our daily lives and activities take place in a complex and extensive legal framework filled with unfamiliar legal terms. And here's another fundamental truth. Ignorantia, juris, neminem, excusat. Ignorance of the law excuses no one. Legal rights and responsibilities play out in all sorts of areas of our lives. Health, housing, relationships, work, wildflowers. Not knowing the law can have serious consequences and sometimes they can be lifelong. So if ignorance of the law is no excuse, then why don't we all know what the law is? We'll give five-year-old wildflower thieving Kate a pass, 
But my client was almost an adult. Why didn't he know? The story with my client actually took place about 30 years ago. So before the internet and the deluge of information that we now live under. But the information was still available then, just a little bit harder to find. But now, we have the internet. Hurrah. And there is a lot of free legal information on the internet. Some of it is dodgy, but some of it is excellent from highly trustworthy sources such as community legal centres, the Legal Aid Commission and government agencies. So now we have the internet and we have good legal information on the internet, then there's no problem. It's just a matter of searching for, oh, what are we searching for? What's your legal issue called? What search terms are you going to use to find the information you need? Are you going to go to the second page of your search term? Are you going to go to the third? Are you going to go back and try some alternative search terms when the first search term doesn't seem to be picking up what you want? Or are you going to go back to that second search on the third page, or actually it might have been the third page of the second search, but or are you just going to flick your computer shut and frisbee it across the room? It's really hard to keep searching for information when you don't exactly know what it is you're looking for. Most internet users don't go to websites. They use search engines. And so it means that the search terms are everything. But it's really hard to find the right search terms for something in an unfamiliar area. And generally speaking, most of us won't keep searching using alternative search terms until we find what we want. Most of us will give up. So having good quality legal information on the internet isn't enough. Oh, then we just need to go and see a lawyer. And that's assuming you can afford one, of course. But we generally don't think to go and see a lawyer to find information. We're generally only going to think to see a lawyer once a legal issue has already occurred. And so by definition, it's too late to prevent it. So having lawyers available isn't enough. Griffith University's professor, Brett Freudenberg, says that between good quality legal information and lawyers is a very large gap. And unfortunately, into that gap fall most of us. So we really need to bridge that gap. And the way to bridge that gap is with legal literacy. Legal literacy is legal awareness and knowledge, but it's more than that. Someone is said to be legally literate when they have knowledge of the legal system, knowledge of their legal rights and responsibilities, and knowledge of how and where to find information and what to do with it when they found it. Now, I'm not talking about turning everyone into lawyers. I think we have enough lawyers. But in addition, there's law schools for that. What I'm talking about here is the basics. Just as you should not need a commerce degree to be financially literate, you shouldn't need a law degree to be legally literate either. So. The goal here is to create a legally literate community. The question then becomes, well, how do we do that? 
there are a lot of really excellent community legal centres and government agencies and the Legal Aid Commission who are all doing an excellent job trying to educate the community and bringing workshops to the community. But they have limited reach. Here at the University of Western Australia, I teach a unit called Adulting, the Law for Everyday Lives. And in this unit, we cover many areas of law that young people need to know about. Health, housing, relationships, work, but we don't cover wildflowers. But I can only reach several hundred students a year. So why aren't we teaching law in schools? We should be. If we can introduce legal content into the school curriculum, then every student would have the opportunity to develop some level of legal understanding. There's already been some success bringing financial literacy into the classroom. Can we make room for something as important as legal literacy as well? If the goal is a legally literate community, then we need to start early. And so by bringing it into schools, then by the time students graduate, they will have had exposure to both legal content and to those skills that they need to help navigate the legal system. So building on from my adulting law for everyday lives unit, I launched the Legal Literacy Project this year. The aim of the Legal Literacy Project is to bring law, legal content and skill development into the classroom through a variety of incursions. We've already worked with two local schools in a pilot program. And in those pilot programs, we covered topics such as the body, consent, medical decision-making, and being a responsible social media user. All topics of immense importance to young people. But we also talked about driving and insurance, and how when you pay for your car to be licensed, the insurance you're getting doesn't cover you if you accidentally hit someone else's car. Only my client had known that. Hopefully, this project will go some way towards bringing law into the school curriculum, but we don't have to stop there. We can and should be looking for a more permanent place for law in the school curriculum. Law could be taught as a vocational course or a standalone life skills workshop. But we can also look to integrate legal content into the key learning areas of the curriculum. So, for example, humanities and social sciences, where civics and citizenship is already being taught. That would be a great place for students to learn about the basics of interpreting a contract, for learning how to find the award that affects their employment and for learning how to be a responsible social media user. In health and physical education, students could learn about consent, and consent education is starting to make inroads into the school curriculum, both here and elsewhere. But they could also learn, learn there about bodily autonomy and medical decision-making. And importantly, it's not just about the content, it's also about that skill development, teaching students how to find trustworthy, good quality, relevant legal information and what to do with it when they found it. Now, I'm not suggesting we necessarily need to bring law into the pre-primary curriculum. 
I'm not sure five-year-old Kate would have had the wherewithal to weigh up the consequences of her shameless botanical criminality. It was a terrible breach of floor and order. But we can and should be bringing law into schools. So, what can we do? If you are a teacher, perhaps you could think about a way to integrate legal content into your subject area. If you are a parent, can you think about a way to help your children become more legally literate? And if you're a young person, go straight to the internet and find a community legal centre or the Legal Aid Commission's website and have a look around. We can all do more to become legally literate. But the Legal Aid Commission website and the community legal centre's websites are excellent places to start. We can and should be more ambitious about creating a legally literate community. Because law affects everyone. So making it accessible and understandable and giving people the skills to navigate it starts with legal literacy. Thank you. <laughs>